So I, my mic is hot, yay. Um, so that was Indian country, not the country of India, in case people were wondering the you know, difference. So <clears throat> I, I come to you from Arcadian Infracom, and um, I've been with the Southern California Tribal Chairman's Association in San Diego for the last 18 years building a microwave network. And I want to share a little bit of experience about what it's like to uh, work with Native American tribes and some of the complications of, of networking in Indian country and why people don't have access and how to solve that. So I leave this up here so you could read it. I'm not going to read my slides, but um, you know, there's some very interesting components that uh, are in the United States. And I spoke in DC and I talked about some of the issues where we have, uh, we did a study and we found that there's 8,000 missing middle mile fiber miles to connect uh, the reservations to the rest of the backbone. So those of you that build backbone um, have you know, gone by Indian reservations, but there are no op options for, for connectivity with the long haul. And then the middle mile providers have gone to you know where the ROI is, but they don't see ROI in the, in the native lands, so those don't come on. So we did a, a study and we mapped out 8,000 missing middle mile miles in the lower 48 alone. So um, there's a little bit of complication there. So um, uh -huh. I'm going to focus a little bit on California because it's where I have a lot of my experience. There's 109 tribes in California, 573 in the rest of the U.S. And the Tribal Digital Village Network that I was working on supports these tribes. And there are um, a cluster of 17 inhabited tribes in San Diego County and then just across the border in Riverside County, there's a f about seven more. And so we work with most of them. And I wanted to just paint the picture of, yeah, will that one go? There we go. Of what's missing in the US. I showed this last time. And those of you who weren't here, these are, the, these are the holes in the general fiber map of the United States. Oddly enough, that's mostly where the reservations are, is where you don't see a black line for fiber. So with Arcadian, we built across, or we're building across uh, Phoenix to Salt Lake, Phoenix to Denver, and we've announced uh, Los Angeles to Dallas that goes through the lands where there is no connectivity for Middle Mile. We'll be working with tribes along that route. We have a deal with the Navajo Reservation, but everywhere. There's these little holes missing in the bottom left here where um, in Southern California, in San Diego County, which everybody assumes is fairly populated, where we have a hole and that's where all the tribes are. So this is the tribal disbursement in San Diego. And obviously we're not on the beach. The beach is to the left. Mexico's to the south, Riverside County to the north. So you get into complication working with tribes because we've been put at the base of the mountains or in the, the valleys that they assumed were not livable. Uh, we've been pushed away from the general population. We've been pushed away from features like the ocean, features like rivers um, to be kept out of sight. So we try to take advantage of those situations we've been put in. You know, you get lemons, you uh, make lemon bars because those are better than lemonade. Um, and we have mountains, and we have things that look like this. So what do you do with mountains? What do you do with tribal geography? It looks pretty hard to build fiber, um, especially underground. But microwave starts to look really, really optimal. So if you take a look at a neighborhood that's in the base of this canyon, surrounded by mountains, um, this is a typical situation in California. And the middle mile fiber does not travel down that road. Um, not, not until the Tribal Digital Village Network started anyway. And this connectivity to this community was just non-existent. Uh, carriers weren't there. Uh, you know, cable was metro only. And so these, these locations with, you know, thousands of people living in these locations didn't have access to internet. So they don't have access to any of the things that your networks help deploy. They don't have access to your tools, your apps, your trainings, your opportunities. Here's another, I have a bunch of pictures in here just to give you an example, but it looks like a suburban neighborhood overlaid on a nice rural landscape. Some of them are pretty deep canyons. You can't even see the houses in this one. There's about 11. 
So we do things like build wireless. Um, short microwave hops, long microwave hops. Uh, most of the stuff runs on solar power. And you know, we try to harness the opportunities that we're given. So we're on a mountaintop, we can see everything. We have line of sight. We are in Southern California, we have a lot of sun. So we put out solar panels and we, and we power our systems with solar panels. And um, we happen to have a lot of really amazing open land with opportunity like this. And a people that are very interested in getting connected. So we've gone through and worked with each of the tribes and built these uh, relay stations that are running on solar power to be able to bring internet to these communities bring all of the services that you guys provide with your networks. And this is, um, this is all possible only because at one point along the way, we were able to navigate access to backhaul. In the very beginning when I started in 2001 with these guys, living with the community, working in the community, owned and operated by the community, we were fighting to get fiber and we didn't have access to fiber because AT&T wouldn't sell it to us. So we got a DS3, we had copper. And copper was $99 a meg per month. So figure out, scale a network with that money. And, uh, and so we were trying to connect our people and figure out this on copper. Things evolved, fiber got put in the valley. We got access to that fiber. We worked with the state, we worked with some of you in the room, we worked with different players to try to help leverage opportunities and bring in, bring in opportunities for the tribes. Then we got access to fiber for the first time. So then we could actually look at a scalable model. We were still at $16 a meg per month, which is still a tough scale, but we had capacity. So we were figuring out how to do this. Um, I like this one because it shows snow in San Diego. People are like, what? But yeah, it snows. We have 6,000 foot elevation mountains sometimes. And so we get access to snow as well. I'm actually looking for a used snowmobile for those of you that live where it snows, you know, hook me up. Um, we have a lot of weather stations. We have a lot of, uh, you know, some agriculture. We have, we have, um, you know, some EPA stuff. We're we're checking water systems and and running different tests on reser res reservations and getting it back to towers and using Internet of Things to try to work on stuff in, in rural communities like this. And so we really need the access to this uh, moving forward. And as communities grow, uh, this I think we're looking down at the Rincon community. And um, so there's now a transient population that comes in because there's a big casino economic development project. And we have, between a few of our casinos, we have the population of Disneyland every day coming through this valley. And, and so these networks become really important and really um, key to connecting Indian country and making sure that the safety mechanisms are there that, that you have in the urban environments and the rural environments. And when you're out in our communities, we want you to be just as safe as you were when you're in your suburb, fancy little happy home. Uh, we want to have those same options there. So we're working with the network builders and working with the different opportunities at the, at the federal government to be able to bring these opportunities to tribes. But, you know, it's a long battle. So as you build out your infrastructure, as you think about who your end user is and how you are gonna work with society and a cross-section of society. Don't forget that there's tribes out there that are very eager to work with your products and be involved with your products, but don't have access usually to your products so, um, because they don't have access to, to network. So as some of your relationships with other companies come along and, and they build opportunity and you have philanthropic efforts, I want you to think about tribes and where at some juncture you could support uh, an opportunity to connect tribes. Uh, at the moment, there is a frequency that is available come January 1 of 2020. It's called EBS. It's uh, 2.5 gigahertz. It is an educational broad broadcast spectrum that is not being, it's really not being used properly, let's say. It's uh, a lot of it's leased to one of the carriers or, or assigned to one of the carriers and they're, uh, they're taking it back and they're gonna auction it off. And the tribes have fought to put this into a tribal priority so that tribes have access to yet another piece of the puzzle to deploy these types of networks. Um, it requires public comment. It requires chiming in from carriers, from, from providers, from uh, content providers, such as some of you in the room. And 
and that public comment would support the tribes having access to this spectrum because you know, we're deploying with unlicensed spectrum on a regular basis. And I guess one of the asks that I will leave with you, um, you know, as we go through this talk is, is the fact that when you see opportunities come up and they're talking about spectrum and they're talking about options, there is a tribal priority that we push at the Federal Communications Commission through the National Congress of American Indians. And we're out there talking to them about opportunity, bring this to the tribes, let tribes have a first shake at it. Because we're, you know, we're a, a minuscule part of the landscape of the United States in the current status. And if we had option of, of that spectrum and those opportunities over tribal land, um, it's not really gonna change the landscape for the carrier or the big industry um, in, the, in the grand scheme of things. So if you have the ability to co publicly comment and support these kinds of efforts, we'd love it. We'd love it if you were looking out for the underconnected uh, in the United States. So we've gotten fairly technologically advanced. Um, you know, several reservations have technical universities. Navajo has two. Um, you know, we have a lot of training. We, we train a lot of our, um, our community members to teach them how to, to build solutions like this. Um, We've learned a lot over the years to be able to provide our own connectivity. And uh, we have turned into, not I wouldn't say solar experts, but we know a lot more about solar than we ever thought we were going to. Um, it looks more like a solar farm than it does a tower. <clears throat> so, um, you know, these are, these are some of the things that, that bring solutions to rural America. Uh, oddly enough, next to our reservations are rural homes that have the same lack of connectivity. So as we grow opportunity in our community and as we get access to fiber backhaul in these communities, we're now getting access to be able to provide to our non-tribal neighbors as well. Um, so we're solving the middle America problem. So connecting San Diego's reservation looks about like this. It takes about two hours to drive from the top left to the bottom right. And the only place that there's fiber available in this network is at the top left and the bottom right, which I think is maybe on my next slide. Uh, it's down the way, I'll show you. Um, so we've resorted to microwave. And um, as I am in the middle of a transition in my career from building from the ground up to building from the top down, uh, the top down solution with Arcadian Infracom is building large capacity long haul fiber that goes from you know data center to data center for a specific customer or set of customers but dragging that line through middle america dragging that line through tribal america and leaving opportunity at that doorstep and partnering with folks that will build out or partnering with the tribe if they already have the wherewithal to put together an opportunity for themselves so here's another bunch of information, a um, little bit more technical, which some of you like. Um, so we use every ounce of unlicensed spectrum that's available. We even use licensed spectrum to do point-to-point -point locations because um, you know, they're not auctioned off and it frees up the use of some of the unlicensed that you see um, in the list here. We're const constantly leveraging opportunity with the Federal Communications Commission. Uh, with, um, with folks like Microsoft uh, working on the TV white space uh, band. We're working with um, a group of people to try to get the licensing for EBS spectrum, the CBRS spectrum, uh, the 3.5 is coming up uh, for change soon and we're working on that as well. So um, to get these people as your customers, there's a big bunch of steps that have to happen to get them online to be able to serve uh, the community so that they can participate in what the rest of the world is doing. We are eager and active, and uh, we really wanna be a part of the, de the development of the rest of the internet and as the things grow and the networks grow. So, you know, we are reaching out as well to try to understand, you know, where we can fit in the modern landscape of, um, of options, and if you see this tower here, uh, the old tower is actually a tower that burned, the little one, and the new tower is the taller one. Uh, we use, on this site, we actually use every available unlicensed spectrum swath that's out there. So whenever we wanna do something new on this tower, we have to take something down. 
and put something up in that spectrum. Or we have to license a link off of it and to free up some space. So there's clearly not enough opportunity. We like to share this information, obviously. And uh, you know, we have folks here in this picture from the Federal Communications Commission. We also have uh, folks from other tribes. So this was early, this was back in probably 2006 and 2007. And the woman in the, um, the kind of pink colored shirt there is a woman named Valerie Fasthorse, and she is the IT director for the Coeur d'Alene tribe in Idaho. And she got out of the military in communications, and she came out for her tribe and visited us during an FCC meeting. And we brought them up the tower, and she stood on that battery box and looked around and said, are you kidding me? You can do this with Wi-Fi? And she got off that box and went home, and she built a uh, fiber and wireless hybridized network in Coeur d'Alene that makes our network look like a hobby. Um, so we're very, very glad to share the opportunity and, and see the opportunities grow and actually increase the availability for the folks to be on and, and using the products and the, and the devices that you are developing. So the Tribal Digital Village Network looks like, like this. Um, we're pretty proud of it. We've rebuilt it three and a half times based on technology changes, based on power changes, and based on needs of the tribe. Um, we are still building. And the, uh, the growth now is how to increase quality, which is to uh, make sure that the power never goes down, because we don't have a lot of network problems. We have some issues with the sun occasionally. It hides behind the clouds. So we have to make sure that we have access to power all the time. Uh, we did actually put up um, generators to support our, our battery solution with the solar. And I have to thank Vint Surf for that. Vint was very generous in, in granting us uh, some money to support our power systems to keep a more resilient network through the winter and through the storms. Um, we're trying to build out to approximately 3,000 homes. We currently have access to about half of those homes and, um, and it's an adoption and awareness process, an education process. And, you know, as the kids come home from school and say, I can't do my homework because I don't have internet, either grandma or, or uh, grandpa or the parents are then signing them up for the TDB service or another internet service and they're getting their kids online. And it's weird because the kids are teaching all the adults how to use the internet. It's not, no, none of the adults know how to use the internet. And it's, it's completely in reverse. Um, it's interesting to see a tribal leader that won't, know how to turn on a computer or has never used a computer to come up to me on the sidebar on a meeting and say, hey Matt, um, can, can you increase the bandwidth to our reservation because, uh, because my grandson is playing you know, this video game or working on this piece of homework and he's watching a video that's instructional and that video is skipping and loading slow and uh, I don't really know what that means, but can you work on that for me? And so it's kind of a cool shift. I've been there for 18 years and uh, it's really neat to see the, you know, the advancement in just the wherewithal, you know, the knowledge base, the change in the, in the landscape, if you will, uh, to see that growth. Um, at the bottom line there, we actually landed a 10 gig circuit on the east side of our network so that we have redundancy finally. And uh, we got it at a much, much more favorable price under $3, obviously not in town prices but um, we were able to then leverage that against our existing network uh, at the, or 10 gig at the other side. We were able to drop prices uh, dramatically and become more affordable to scale. Uh, we we're actually be able, being able to increase speeds to homes. So this is the kind of um, solution that you're gonna see moving through opportunity in Indian country. And if you're out there building fiber, or if you're out there connecting your community, or if there's an opportunity to use E-rate to leverage the federal government subsidy to bring access to a community, to a library, a school, or a Head Start program, be creative. Uh, the tribes have learned very well how to leverage federal monies and not trip over the, the audit process and actually um, facilitate like the dig once protocols that are trying to be implemented. Federal money won't pay for the tribe to have its own fiber. It'll only pay for the fiber that goes from A to B to get to the tribe's library. 
But when the trench is open, we finally broke the rule to be able to lay conduit and fiber of our own. So if you are working on a project with a tribe on that level, and I know some of you through here uh, work on E-Rate and do different things with, with different communities, please uh, be creative in your process and work with the local community to, to open up opportunities for them to bring fiber into their own community if you have the trench open or if you're gonna do that. Or maybe even build it into your price and opportunity so that they can pay off over time or work some creative financing out. Um, I just throw a bunch of fun pictures in here. We actually gathered a handful of our towers out of a, a, a recycle yard. I would advise no one on the planet to do that ever. It was 120 degrees in El Centro that day on the left. And uh, we actually had to pick the bolts, the nuts and the washers out of 50 gallon drums. And I'm pretty sure we burned our hands on the, on the metal uh, for the whole afternoon. And we all lost weight. It was a pretty good program. Um, we, drug them, we drug them home on, on a trailer that was designed for what, what we thought was good enough. And we ended up burning up the brakes. So next time we're going to get it delivered in a box <coughs> with instructions. Um, on the right side of that photograph, uh, you see us using uh, a tool to stand up a tower next to a building at, at our actually uh, our data center there. And, um, you know, it, any tool, any opportunity, any creativity, right? I mean, sometimes you can't get to the top with the equipment. I mean, I can walk up a bit, but I can't get up there with the gear. So a lot of times we have to actually get a, a helicopter employed. And uh, this guy was a wizard at the at the stick. He, uh, he could take eight loads up and seven loads down in one hour as long as we had somebody unhooking and hooking at the top and the bottom. Ex-Vietnam pilot, he was brilliant. He's since retired. And then the other one is, you know, me. And I carry stuff up the hill. Um, so here's, here's what the top of a hill solution looks like. You know, we're out there with chainsaws, clearing brush, making sure we don't have fire hazards. We're constantly having to do weed abatement and things like that around our solar panels. Um, and these are, the, you know, these are the big endpoint solutions that nobody's really thinking about when you're like, hey, I got this cool app and it's gonna fly over this network and all these people are gonna use it. You probably don't ever think that you gotta drill holes in rocks to mount solar panels in between two rocks so that the wind doesn't blow it off because that's a 100 mile an hour wind on the top of that mountain on a regular basis. Um, or hide the, hide the tower in the tree so the tree takes the hit from the wind. So there are some interesting scenarios there. Um, I was talking about emergency services and things, and our valleys tend to catch on fire. We are in California, which catches on fire regularly, and I do believe we're still on fire today. Uh, Los Angeles, I believe. So, uh, you know, these are some of the things that the internet helps um, be able to increase communications and solve problems. That red stuff on that plane is, you can hardly see it in that photograph, but he's about to dump that on one of our communication towers and save it. Uh, the fire's coming up over the back and our tower's right on the edge and it's stuck in the smoke and he's gonna hit the tower and save us. Um, but this is what it looks like when you don't save the tower, when you, you know, the, you know, homes first, then towers. Well, they were fighting homes on this day and so we lost this tower. So there's some devastating stuff out there. So we're working with natural disaster, we're working in landscapes that you're just not really expecting, you know, this to do. It'd be great to bury fiber out here, but burying fiber on Native American land is complicated because when there were records of where things were buried, those records were burned. Um, we were moved on a regular basis, so you know reference points and things like that got a little muddy, and we couldn't figure out like, oh, was it here by that tree, or was it this tree where this this happened? So there's a lot of complication in digging across native land. So a lot of it ends up being this way, and then you get grumpy people, people that don't understand the internet. You didn't do a good job on your outreach and education, and uh, and they get mad and they come up and they break your stuff. So. Do a better job. A um, little bit of demographics. We have somebody watching some of our traffic and are taking a look at what we're, what we're doing. And uh, interestingly enough, that's the breakdown on how we kind of play on the internet. Um, crazy enough, uh, the number one site is Instagram as far as like contact. And then the number one site expectedly is Netflix. But typically Facebook's the number one. Tribal uh, communities are very, very visual less word oriented and uh, Instagram plays into that very well and then YouTube as well. So um, it makes a lot of sense. And interestingly enough, the traffic on Instagram doesn't go to the outside world. It goes to another reservation. Like 89% of the time, the contact on Instagram is watching people from other reservations and communities that are within the tribal community of Southern California. 
And then the median age is pretty dramatic drop too. And I kind of already covered this, so we'll just skip that. It's a bunch of words. Um, and that's me. Um, so I, I do have about four and a half minutes or so for, for questions, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. But I just wanted to kind of gloss over the fact that, you know, I'm coming from a situation where I used to build from the ground up. And I'm still affiliated with that group, and I'm still doing their policy work and helping them fight the fight at the FCC and then Congress and things to be able to continue opportunities. Um, however, I am also now working with Arcadian Infracom and I am building from the top down. I'm changing the landscape with my team of people and we are dragging that monster fiber path right next to and onto reservations and small towns in USA and bringing that opportunity in so that more networks like the TDV network can be stood up either by the tribe or by partner organizations or by some of the efforts that you're doing here in the room on, and partnering with folks to to do outreach, to do E-rate, to do things like that. And, and we're more than eager to, uh, to open the door to the opportunities to the native communities and excited about the, the future of what that can bring. So if there are any questions, I'm more than happy. Yeah, Ma Martin Levy, Cloudflare. Um, can you explain the licensing issues within the tribal lands in regards to the FCC? Is there any difference or is there any subtlety or anything in your favor? So we would love for there to be a difference. We would love to be able to say that our sovereignty covered spectrum, but the, you got to remember the United States recognized Native Americans as humans in 1926. And the reservation system was long after they took control and created the United States and therefore it is a resource that has been allocated to the US itself, and it supersedes the reservation system and we have no claim to it. Um, it's very unfortunate, we are sovereign dependents, we are not sovereign independents of the United States government, and so we do not have any favor when it comes to that as a resource or a utility, you know, like our possession. Um, we have, over the years, been able to, I don't know if it's tug on the heartstrings or, or you know, make a case for, the opportunity to be able to like let tribes have a shot at it before somebody else gets it, but um, you know that's that's about all the leverage we have at this point. It's unfortunate. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Joe Provo, Google. Um, I I like this. Thank you for sharing all this information. This sure. is really cool work. Um, you made a lot of mention of the wireless and the fiber, and you one of those pictures you mentioned data center. Uh, uh, given the content providers that you are having there, do you have a lot of uptick with CDNs, caches, and people actually deploying with you? Or is that something we should be soliciting of those of us in the room? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, a little of both. Well, we already have some conversations going, but we'd love to have some more conversations. So, absolutely. I'll grab your card maybe after. <laughs> yeah, good deal. Uh, are there any further questions? Thank you very much. Appreciate it.